In this video, I am going to teach you how to add products to a WooCommerce store. There are a lot of different settings and variables with adding products. So I want to just walk you through all of the steps to make sure that you're adding your products correctly to your website. The first thing that you'll want to do is go to the products tab and then to add a new product, you'll hit add new. Before we get started with adding our product name and our description, I want to scroll down to this area here because this will determine what we need to do to add our product. We need to figure out what type of product we are going to add. And there's a few different options available in this dropdown. We have a simple product, which means there's no variations at all. So that would be maybe a coffee mug. There's no variations in color or size or anything like that. So that would be a simple product. Now you can also do a grouped product. So a grouped product is kind of like a bundle of different things together. So that would be another option as well. We have an external or affiliate product. So if we click this, what you do is actually put in a link to an external site. So if you're selling something, let's say on Amazon, you can put the product URL to Amazon here and then on the website front end, it would take you right to Amazon so you can buy the product. You wouldn't actually use WooCommerce's checkout system. Another option is a variable product. A variable product would be anything that has any sort of variation. So for example, if you are selling a t-shirt, a variation could be the size of the t-shirt, small, medium, large, extra large, for example. Another variation could be the color. If you have different colors, you would put those variations in there. So if you're selling something with variations, you definitely want to select a variable product so you can add those variations in instead of adding them as multiple different products on the site. You want to do it this way instead, and we'll get more into that a little later. You can also do simple subscriptions or variable subscriptions as well. So this is something that if you are selling maybe some sort of bundle subscription service, you would want to choose that as your product. So before we get started on anything, we want to determine what type of product we are going to add to the site and select that appropriate drop down here. So I'm just gonna go back to simple product and we'll start with that. And we're just gonna go up to the top again and we'll just add our product name. I'm just gonna call this coffee mug. And then down below, you can add your description. I recommend adding as many details as possible to this area. Give people a clear idea of what it is that you're selling. Scrolling back down to this area, we have the simple product selected and we will go to the general tab. The general tab is where you'll put your pricing. So the regular price of the coffee mug, let's say it's $15. If we wanted to include a sale price, we could put that here. Let's say I wanted to put this coffee mug on sale for $12 and I wanted to schedule that sale. Well, I type in 12 here and then I hit schedule and I have an option to select a date for the sale. So from and to, so you can put in when it starts and when it ends. So that's a pretty cool feature that's built right into WooCommerce. So now that our general tab is filled out, the next tab we'll move on to is inventory. This is where you will put in your SKU number, and this is where you can manage your stock as well. So I'm going to put in my SKU as coffee mug. You can really put in whatever you want. If you are using a third-party service to manage your inventory like Square or Stripe or any other POS system, you want to make sure that the SKU numbers match in order to sync the inventory properly. Uh, for this example, I'm not using that, so I'm just going to put in this as my SKU, and then I will click Manage Stock, and this allows me to say how many items I have in stock. 
So when people buy the items, this number will change. So if somebody bought the coffee mug, it would change from five to four on the front end. So people will know that there's only four left in stock. You can also allow for back orders. By default, it's do not allow, but you can select allow but notify customer or just allow. And what this will do is let people buy things that are out of stock. The last option under inventory is this sold individually button. If you check that, you can enable this to only allow one item to be bought. So people wouldn't be allowed to buy more than one of this coffee mug if I had that checked. The next tab is shipping. Now shipping is obviously for items that are physical products that you need to ship out. If you are using virtual or downloadable products, which you would check here if that is the case, you don't have to worry about this. But in this case for our coffee mug, we do need to add some information in terms of shipping. So we will put in the weight and then we'll put in the dimensions of the box that this will be shipped in. You want to make sure that you're putting in information as accurately as possible because that helps determine the shipping rates. So you'll put in that information in here. So another option you have is to set a shipping class. If you do have shipping classes set up in WooCommerce settings, they would show up in here and you can select those for the particular product. The next tab is linked products. Linked products allow you to upsell and cross sell different items in your store. So with upsells, you can search for different products and say on your product page that these are products that you might be interested in buying. So let's add a couple different things in here. So I'm just going to type in some products that I already have in my store. If you just start typing in the title, it will show up. So it's kind of cool that they have this feature. So I'm just going to add three different products that are in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and publish this right now so we can see kind of how things are looking. Even though we are far from done, I just wanna show you what this looks like. So you can see that this is pretty much the generic WooCommerce page template. Uh, we still have to add our image and a lot of information, but if we scroll down to this area, this is where our upsells are. So it adds it to the bottom and this is just kind of more incentive for people to shop. Cross sales work similarly to the upsells. You just search for products and you can add those in with cross sales. What they recommend for those is to add items that would work well with whatever it is that you're selling. So since I'm selling a coffee mug, if I had a product that was coffee, maybe we would add that to this section. So that's kind of the difference. What upsells are generally like more expensive items, cross sells are things that kind of work well together. The next tab is attributes. Attributes are for variable products. If you are adding a simple product, you won't have to worry about this. But if you are doing a variable product, this is where you put in those variations. So with variable products, you're going to add your sizes, different colors, anything that could be a variation. And you would add that right here. You hit add and this comes up so you would name your variation i'm just going to do size and you would want to say visible on the product page and used for variation so check both of those boxes and then you can put in your different sizes so if i had different sized coffee mugs i could do small and then you want to do the pipe symbol and then large and when you save those attributes, it will save into this area. You can expand upon this and you can see that they are added in. And then the next step is to go to variations and create the variations. So when you click on variations, if you go to this drop down and say create variations from all attributes, 
and hit go, it will create different items for you with different SKU numbers. So you'll see what happens. When you hit expand, you have the small coffee mug where you can add in all your different information here. So you can put in a different SKU number, you can put in different pricing, different weights, everything becomes different. And then for the large coffee mug, same thing. You can do all of the different variations for that product in here. You'll want to make sure that you put in your price because it won't work unless there is a price for each item. So we're gonna put in uh, $15 for this one and we'll put in $15 here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and hit update so I can show you on the front end how things look. So now you can see we have an option for size. So we can choose either small or we can choose large. And once I put in additional information, more things will change, but we're getting somewhere as you can see. I'm back on the variation tab so I can show you how to customize each variation. Within this tab, you can add different pictures, different SKU numbers, different pricing, different everything for each variation. So I've gone ahead and done that already for my two variations. So for the small coffee mug, I added a picture, I added a different SKU number, and I went ahead and added pricing, weight, dimensions, and a description for each. So you can see that in here. Going to the front end, let me show you what happens when I select the different options. If I choose small, you see how the picture changes and then we also have a short description for the product here. Down below, we have some information about the weight dimensions and sizes as well. If I select large, you can see how the picture changed again, the description changed, and the information down here also change. Now that we've gone over variations, the next tab is advanced. The advanced tab allows for purchase notes that you can send to your customers. It also allows you to change the menu order so you can display it on your shop page in a different location if you select this. You also have the option to enable or disable reviews by checking this button. So if people wanted to leave a review for the product, you can allow that to happen. You can see on the front end that the reviews tab is right here, and this will allow people to leave their review for the product. The last tab is get more options, and this just kind of promotes some different add-ons and plugins that you can use on WooCommerce sites to give you more options. So that's something that you might want to check out if you are interested in getting your store to do more things or you just wanna make things a little bit easier for you. There's a lot of different extensions to WooCommerce. If you run a WooCommerce store, you probably already know that. So this is just kind of a way to promote some cool things that you can do. Scrolling down towards the bottom, this is where you can put in a short description of your product if you want to. Depending on your theme or what you're using to build your WooCommerce store, this may or may not show, um, but if you do have that enabled, this is where you would put that. This is just kind of like a short blurb and the longer description is where you would put in every detail. This last section is for reviews. I just talked about how you can enable reviews for products and this is where they'll show up if somebody leaves a review. And this is kind of like the comment section on the blog. If you have that enabled, you can respond to comments. If it is a spam comment, you can mark it as such and just kind of manage the reviews in here. Let's move over to this right column. Product categories, you can set categories for your products in here. It's very similar, again, to the way the blog works and adding categories. You would just tick the appropriate category and if you need to add a new one, you just hit add new and then you would type in the category and select a parent category if appropriate, then hit the add new category button. You can also 
tag products if you want to get more specific um, an organization you can do that as well and then the product image is where you'll set your product image and your product gallery is where you will add any additional photos that you might have so let me set a product image here this kind of works like the thumbnail does for a blog posts you would put your product image here this is kind of like the featured image for your product and then underneath you can add additional photos to a gallery if i scroll up to the top and hit update on this let me show you what things look like on the front end so now you can see i have my main image showing up when i land on the page and underneath we have these different thumbnails if i click on this one it changes up here and there's also this zooming effect that's built into WooCommerce so people can zoom in really closely on products, which could be very beneficial if you are selling something that has some intricate details that people want to look at. I've added some additional details to my product, which you can now see on the front end. So we have our product short description here. Down below, we have a long description, and I even added a review so you can see what that looks like. Before I wrap this video up, I want to go over virtual and downloadable products and how we add that information. We're going to scroll back down to this section here. Virtual products or downloadable products are under the simple product category. So you can see that there are these check boxes here. If we have a virtual product, we will check this box here. What that does is it eliminates anything related to shipping because this is a virtual product. People aren't going to need to worry about putting in their shipping information or anything like that. And you're not gonna have to worry about adding the information in terms of shipping because there's nothing to be shipped. So you would just want to check that box if you have any virtual products that you're selling on the site. Things like courses or coaching sessions, stuff like that would be considered a virtual product. A downloadable product is a little bit different. If we click on this, you can see how there is now this downloadable files box that comes up under our general tab. What you would do when you have a downloadable product is add the file here. So you would upload a PDF, a document, whatever it is that you're selling to this area here. You would also set any download limits and any uh, expiry dates if there are some for when people can download the product. You would set all of that up and upon checkout, once somebody has paid for the product, they get redirected to the link to download their file. So all of this happens within the WooCommerce checkout system. So it's pretty cool, but I just wanted to cover both of these things because there are additional steps when you do virtual or downloadable products that you have to take into consideration when setting up your products in WooCommerce. I hope that you found this video helpful. I know that there is a lot of different settings within WooCommerce in terms of adding products to the site. So going through this video, I hope that you got some clarity and you now know the best way to add products to your site. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.